You see, when Jesus died on the cross, this is found in Philippians 2, 8, he was found in fashion as a man, so he humbled himself and brought himself down into a man. And he became obedient unto death. This is the will of the Father. This is why God sent him to earth. Even the death of the what? Even the death of the cross. Paul is saying to the church at Philippi, everything we do is because and made possible by everything he's done. The cross is a picture of God rescuing you from you. You say, I don't need to be rescued from me. Listen, every single person in this room is on their way to complete rejection of God. And the moment we are on our way, listen, the moment you realize that you're a sinner, and I don't know if that was at five or at 15, or you probably knew a little bit before that, but you realize, oh my goodness, I am responsible. I am accountable to God for my sin. At the moment of accountability, God says, okay, what are you going to do about it? You're going to try to work your way? Well, that's, that's frustrating. You can't do that. So God knows that we're on this downward slope to our own destruction, to, to rejection of God, to a complete disaster. It is horrible to think of what happens when you choose not to spend eternity with God. By the way, God wants to spend eternity with you, but he won't force you into it, right? And so here's this picture that, that, that the, the Bible, the wages of sin is death. Man, it is a slippery slope right down to you know where, right? But God commends his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How many of you are thankful that once you were on your way, you were on the slippery slope, but God rescued you, God picked you out and said, hey, you are no longer on your way uh, to a Christless hell. You are on your way to heaven. Why? Because my son came and died on a cross for you. I'm thankful for that. A great picture of that is a man who was parachuting and he was coming down to land on a mountain. As he landed on the mountain, it was too icy. He was going to slide off the other side of the mountain. And right before he slid off the other side of the mountain, he was rescued. And guess what he was rescued by? He was rescued by the cross. I want you to know that's the perfect, that's the perfect illustration of what happens when you and I place our faith in Jesus Christ. We're rescued by the cross. We are rescued by the fact that, hey, on our own, we were destined for death but through Jesus, we have life, and we have life more abundant. And so we come back to John 15, and we realize that Jesus is calling us to sacrifice, not because we have to, but because we get to. A.W. Tozer put it this way. He said, the pain of sacrificing our old selves is nothing compared to the joy of Christ living in us in our transformed lives. You see, we can be transformed, Romans 12, 2 says. We can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. How? Well, we must sacrifice. In fact, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And so he says, listen, this is going to happen when you are connected in my love. Listen, when, when Christ has rescued you, he's rescued you for a purpose. Now you're living out that purpose in obedience, in faith, and in service. 